Hey, this is Chris with Gun and Shot TV. Um, today I'm going to be talking about cleaning up your Rossi R92 and uh, getting it real smooth. Um, this is in 357 Mag 38 Special. I just picked it up. The lever was super tough. Um, had a whole lot of tension to it. Uh, it was really difficult to quickly work it. It was having problems feeding. Let me show you. Um, I have... These are reloads that I bought from a commercial reloader. These are some reloads that I made myself. And these are Fiocchi brand new 357 mag. Now the Fiocchi is actually in the middle of the two as far as height, but the uh, Fiocchi would just hang up terribly. So I was doing a little bit of research and um, it seemed like the solution to all the problems was go through, clean up the action, and uh, mess with the springs a little bit. So I looked around, there's some kits online you can buy, but being a cheap bastard, I figured I would see what I could do myself. So the first thing I did was took it all apart. To do that, you're going to need uh, some tape just to hold the receiver up to get the pins out. Recommend a uh, pair of needle nose, you'll need them. I've got this gunsmithing screwdriver, which is a shitty one from Walmart, but it's got the flat bits that you're going to need in the different sizes so you don't strip anything. You're going to need a punch. You're going to need a new spring. I found a spring that there's 10 of in here for five bucks, so it's a 50 cent spring. Got this at Harbor Freight. They go on sale for even less than that, so if you've got a local Harbor Freight, stop in and see what they're selling them for. I would recommend some uh, decent grease. This is Molly grease that I got from the auto section at Walmart. Works great. So uh, to get in there, first we need to take off the stock. do that you're going to take out this screw in the tang okay. so now your stock is off the next thing you need to do is pin the hammer spring. So you're going to hold the hammer back, there's a little hole, you're going to shove your pin through, and that just pretty much makes the spring captive. So when you take it apart, the spring doesn't go flying. You need to change bits and go with the smaller bit. You're going to take out this screw, which is the pin that holds the hammer and the lower tang assembly together. So that is your pin. Now at this point you can pull the lower tang out and the hammer out. So now you have these out. While well, you're in here, this flat, flat spring, if you take it out, unscrew this bolt, you can polish it, clean it up a little bit where it meets the uh, trigger and you can put spacers, you can do a bunch of stuff. I found it was easiest. I tried spacers. Easiest thing was just take it and take some of the tension out of it, bend it a little bit. Not a whole lot, just enough to lighten it up a little bit. Then when you put it back, you want to make sure that you leave some space on either side of the spring so it's not binding against the housing that it rides in. And then I would grease everything really well with some Molly Lube. Um, your next step is taking the bolt out. So you've got this uh, one screw up here that hides the pin that holds the bolt to the lever. So you're going to take that out, just a little little set screw, and then you're going to need to drive out that pin. So you're going to flip it over, lose your punch, and uh, you're just going to gently tap until the pin falls out. And now you're acting all fall apart. 
And what you want to do is when you're in here, you're going to want to go through and clean up all the wear marks. Polish them a little bit. Make sure you don't have any uh, burrs or anything. You'll see after you work the action a little bit, you'll see wear marks. So what I did is I went through and I polished all those pieces. The only thing I would tell you is while you're polishing, don't get carried away. There's uh, some wear marks here. I kind of polished everything that was worn. But you want to stay a little bit higher than I did because you can kind of see a little bit of where I polished when the lever is closed. So if you go in there, otherwise you're going to have to cold blue it or something. Not a huge deal, but like I said, it, it actually is more exposed than it looks to be. And there is wear down there, so either or. So now that you're all apart, you've polished everything you want to polish. You know, go light, don't take a bunch of crap off. I would clean this ejector up, like polish it, find any rough spots, burrs, anything like that. But this is this is the biggest thing that I found. The uh, spring that's in there, the stock spring, this is the stock spring. It is short and very, very hard. Um, and it causes the action, the last little bit of the action closing to be very tough. It also caused the feeding issues I had. So. I was looking online and I found a couple of spring kits that had a spring like this. Well, the problem was I couldn't find a way to get this spring in there. So I tried cutting it down and stretching it. Got this one to go in there, but it was almost too little ejection force. So I did a little bit of looking online and the kits, I found there's a special way to, to seat that spring. And like I said, the spring is the... 730 seconds by one and a half inch spring. There's 10 of them in here if you go to Harbor Freight. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, but to get it in there, this is the trick. You have to put the spring in here. You're going to need a round to act to hold the ejector in place. So we're going to put this back in here. Gonna put the round in there, okay? So it's it's kind of like that. I find it's easiest to go here because you gotta come in from this side, and then you probably need your pliers to kind of force this ring up to where it needs to be. This is the hardest part of it. Just a little bit of clearance, but not much. And really what you need to do is you need to force this ring to where it seats. And then you're going to use this pin and drive it in here. Now the, the bad thing about this is to reassemble it, you need that pin out. So you kind of have to do a three-step assembly. Um, but once you get that figured out, it's pretty straightforward. So you put this spring in, and then we're going to drive that pin home. Okay, so the pin is in place, holding this whole assembly together. Now, we'll grease everything because we're going to start putting stuff back together. Um, you're going to need a round in here just to kind of hold this all together while we're putting it together. And be very careful. I mean, if you have a bolt safety, use it. If you have a dummy round, that's advisable as well. So now, we have the parts in there. The pin is in there. The pin needs to be out to put this lever back. So now I need to get the pin back out. So we got to kind of hold the bolt closed and tap that pin back out, same as when we installed it. Okay. So now your bolts all set. Your pins out. But everything's assembled correctly. So now grease everything, clean everything up. Keep saying that because that's going to help smooth everything out as well. You're going to put this together like this. The pin that's permanent is on this side. These two cutouts are in the back. You're going to want to move the bolt back to where you can kind of see these notches out the back here. You're going to go straight up with your lever and your two locking lugs. And 
kind of got to play with it here. This is a sticky point, and then you'll get to a point where it just magically all fits in place. Now you need to put this pin back in. Now, the pin is rounded on one end and has little ferrules or whatever they are, grooves, um, on the other end. So the, the rounded end goes in first, and you kind of are just going to jockey this a little bit, and then it's going to pop into place, and then take your punch and gently drive it back in. If you don't drive it in far enough, the action will seize. If you drive it in far enough, it'll work just fine. Now you've got your screw here. And then, like I said, this just covers that hole kind of and makes sure the pin doesn't back out. And you don't want to tighten this too much because it can actually lock up the action. You can overextend it. So this would be a good thing to lock tight once you get your rifle all squared away so it doesn't seize up your action. So now we're pretty much almost ready to put everything back together. We've got your... Tri uh, hammer you want to polish that clean it up grease it really well all the wear areas that you see I polished here polished back here and then grease the hell out of it you're gonna take your trigger which you're gonna need to pull a little bit and make sure that this spring is in the right spot and this is a little bit of uh, playing around here I'm not gonna lie it's all about getting the proper alignment of all the all the different pieces that are at play, uh, which is somewhat frustrating, but it's going to be worth it when your rifle's all set and suddenly you can work it without uh, having shells jam up your action. Okay, so it helps to pull the trigger a little bit too. To make sure everything's seated. Okay. If you look through the hole, you can see if everything's lined up or not. Oh, I got the wrong screw. That pays to uh, pay attention. Okay, so now everything's there, everything's moving. I just gotta screw this back in. Just gotta change out bits real quick. Wrong bit. Now you need to take this pin out. So you're going to hold the hammer back, pull the pin, and now you're going to put your stock back on. Change out your bit one last time here. And tighten your tang screw to hold the stock together. And notice the tang. The upper and lower tang pull together when you do this and really cinch the stock on tight. So you want to make sure that everything's lined up right when you do this. So the stock actually connects well. Okay, so now I went through. The only other thing I really did is uh, I took a little bit of the mag spring off and lubed the mag tube a little bit. Um, I was having problems getting 10 rounds in. It was just super, super tight. Um, you could probably take off more than this, but I would like to make sure that it retains functionality if anything sticks a little. So I'd rather be a little too tough than cut off too much spring and now i got to buy a new spring. So um, now let me show you the ejection. We can put in all three different rounds, um, the one of which did not feed before. Make sure your gun's on safe, clearly. Um, everyone's saying test it with a dummy round, all that. I understand that. Unfortunately, to ascertain whether it's going to feed or not, you got to test it with the rounds you're going to be firing. So now, take a look. And everything works. It feeds awesome. It's super slick. Now that when you close it, the only thing you really feel is this latch 
and you can feel that. But other than that, the action is butter smooth and uh, trigger is super smooth. And rather than going out and buying some kit and DVD and all that stuff, you can go to Harbor Freight, get you some of these springs, get you some of this Maui grease, and I would recommend getting yourself the shot of your choice to toast your success. Or if you screw anything up, to toast your failure. But hopefully everything works out. For Gun and Chai TV, this is Chris. Have a rootin' tootin' drunken shootin' day.